Hi everyone, welcome to the Halo Show. Good to see you all, good to see you Russell. Oh, all right, today's episode we're going to talk about uh, something specific uh, for, for females, some female pattern hair loss, and it's top use of topical estrogen uh, for hair loss. And we know that estrogen is really beneficial and we can see that uh, the evidence is, is very, there's obviously very good data to support this, but if we look at pregnant women, for example, pregnant women have a high level of estrogen and during pregnancy, they've got thick, they you know, generally comment that they've got shedding. Thick, yes, stop shedding. They've got thick, luscious hair. As soon as they uh, deliver, their uh, estrogen levels plummet through the, the floor and they have a, a significant shed and a lot of them worry in that sort of postpartum phase that, oh my God, I'm losing tremendous amounts of hair. And that just highlights the protective effect that uh, estrogen has. So we can, based on that, we can use estrogen therapy to, to help with hair loss and topical estrogen is a uh, potential... So um, something that's been very popular in Europe for decades. Um, and um, I mean, it, it, Europe and South America, for example, are usually first out of the block for topical therapies or for mesotherapy type mm -hmm. uh, things because they, they, uh, this is a culturally um, open to, the, to, to that. So they've been using estrogen for a long while. The thing about it is, of course, that, that uh, not every woman wants to take estrogen orally. Yeah. Um, and so this is another reason for the idea of using it topically. It's kind of curious um, that estrogen has different effects upon hair at the hairline, for example, in men and women. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we don't really do it in our men unless they're transitioning. Uh, then, then, we can, yes. then we can use estrogen. Then. But um, the effect, um, the effect of, uh, of estrogen on hairline in men is the opposite of what it, what it does in women, which is kind of weird. Um, uh, and I'm just talking about it at the hairline, not yeah. so much in behind. So the reality is that it is a legitimate um, uh, therapy, but it's not a standalone therapy. Yeah. All right? It's not going to be uh, enough. Um, where would we uh, be nervous about using it in women? Well, I suppose for the ones that are estrogen receptor positive yes. breast cancer yep. in the family history or they have a personal history of it, uh, we'd be worried about that. Um, so obviously we have to take a careful medical history if you're going to use yep. you know, hormone supplementation. And this is what we are doing. So everything else we talk about really isn't hormone supplementation. But when we talk about estrogen, we're talking about hormone that. supplementation. And so that falls into the whole category of What's the risk benefit reward ratio here uh, for it? And uh, that's something you deal with a lot because yeah. you do that a lot. Yes. With your so I think I think from that perspective, you know, we want to be careful and and there's no such thing as estrogens. The estrogen, there's lots of different types of estrogen. And where estrogen has had a bad uh, rep in the press is that high levels of certain types of estrogen has been associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. And so taking large doses of, uh, of oral estrogen has a potential increased risk for that. Whereas I think there is a higher margin of safety and I use my words carefully, it's just a higher margin of safety. It's not by any means completely negates the, the risk, but there's a higher margin of safety if you're using a topical specific preparation of, of, of estrogen. So again, you need to be able and they to... they have to be formulated because they're, yes. they're, they're not really readily available oh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Well in, in a standard formation. You Correct. actually have to custom build one yes. uh, uh, to use in an area. And if you're going to do it, we have to be realistic about the outcome. I mean, as the hair, I've said this before, as the hairs shrink from healthy to less healthy, there's a window of opportunity where doing things like this may be useful. Once the hairs to get less than 50% of yeah. their original quality and they get into these really wispy hairs, this is not where estrogen is going to have it, an effect. No. So if, you're, if you've gone so far down that, that it's path, not going to be helpful. then it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to get the outcome that you're, you're hoping for. And again, making sure that it's done properly. So you've measured, you know, you know where your baseline levels are. You've taken, like you said, you've taken a good family history. You know what the potential risks are there. And then in certain populations, that may be a, a beneficial thing to be able to apply uh, topically. Again, like most topical agents, applying it to the hair is largely uh, Irrelevant, uh, uh, unsuccessful, and useless. You want to get it onto the scalp to be able to absorb in that way. But I think the other thing that, that's slightly off topic is that I, I had a woman come in this week with an IUD, and the IUD has a progestogen in it, yes. not an estrogen, but the progestogen is an, at the androgenic end of the scale. So people should be aware that not all progestogens that are in pills or in um, medicated IUDs are the same. 
And so I looked at her one and I was a little bit uncomfortable that this was the progesterone that was being used in the right. IUD, which is going to be there for five years, yes. right? This IUD, the IUD stays in for five years. And I'm thinking I might have to, you know, like try and work a bit harder to counter the effect of that progesterone because that progesterone is like an old school oral contraceptive. Yes. And that's um, why you get some people on or that when they come off the older versions of the oral contraceptive pill have a significant uh, shedding at that point uh, well, that's as well. The, 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 well, we have lower estrogen, yes. but they've also got the, the, they've got the yes. different progesterones Correct. now as well. We have the better hair protective ones now than yeah. we used to have before. So again, it is a viable therapy. It is hormone manipulation, so you need to be aware of that. And therefore, it's not to self-medicate, yes. it has like to be carefully to, controlled. Yeah, it has to be. You have to be taking good advice, and it has to be monitored regularly to make sure that you are still main, being maintained within uh, that safe uh, those safety margins. And then, in certain people, it can be useful. That's right. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for subscribing and viewing, and I will look forward to talking to you next time. Take care.